guys so i just heard a noise and i'm really worried because i'm pretty sure that something just came back hey everybody and welcome back to grounds family farm as y'all know lately we've been dealing with a lot of predators you saw the video where we had the predator get in demolish most of our chickens then we had the deal with the skunk the other night and it just keeps happening got a phone call from kimberly today that i didn't want to get on one case, it was a good thing because we finally figured out what is getting our animals, but it was at a huge cost that we found that out. Kimberly recorded a little bit about that, so we're going to insert that here. So guys, my heart is still pounding. I came over here because I heard a guinea and looked up and saw it flying up on top of that feed bin over there. And it was still perched there, and then it just like took off. So I came running across here since I was over there filling up the donkey waters. And by the time I got here, I saw the back of a dog and it was over in the pasture over there. And I saw another one, it was in the pen. It was trying to pull a duck through the pen. And I scared it and it just bolted over the side of the fence. Um, but I was terrified because I didn't have anything. There was nothing I could do about it. And Kevin's not home, he's working because he's been working crazy shifts this week. But my ducks are dead. I mean, how does this happen in broad daylight? I mean, let me show you. I mean, look. Okay, there's a couple down in the feed barrel, feed bin over there. But look at this carnage. This is awful. And you can see over here where they jumped the fence. I mean, oh, I, I got one chicken left. One chicken. I guess they scared her and she, she flew out of the pen. Oh, goodness. I don't even know what to do. I'm going to have to call Kevin or his dad or something because I... I I don't know what to do because I'm still on restrictions and I'm fixing to go call Kevin and see what we can figure out and maybe call his dad and see if he'll help me go look for these to see if we can figure out how to eliminate the threat because that was too close for comfort. I mean, it was just across the pen from me <laughs> and I don't know if they are, you know, okay with people or if it's something I should be scared of. So I didn't want to get too close either, but this is awful. When Kevin gets home, we're going to figure out what to do. So now you see it's been some wild dogs that somebody dumped off that's been killing our animals. Somebody's selfishness and carelessness is costing us and our animals' lives, and it's ridiculous. I'm furious about it. Um, we found a post on Facebook where somebody in the community had posted about seeing somebody dump these dogs off several weeks ago, but they've not been able to track them down or figure out who's done it. But I'm going to be looking for them now and also looking for these dogs. They keep coming back, doing senseless killing. I mean, it's not like they're killing to eat because they're just killing stuff and leaving it laying. It's ridiculous and we are tired of it. I've been working crazy schedule, so we mowed all this, got the pen moved, thinking that maybe if we got some of the weeds out and around and got it clear, it might deter them. Plus, got the fence, made sure it was good and tight where they couldn't get in, but they still found a way in. We also had some suggestions in the last one to move the feed barrel back. We did that. And it's just ridiculous how they just keep coming. Well, thankfully, Rio Link sent us some cameras and we're fixing to get those set up and we're going to try to catch these animals and put an end to it. Um, after Kimberly called me about it, I actually saw these dogs uh, about a half mile down the road. It was probably shorter than that in the pasture, but there was nothing I could do because I didn't have any way to take care of them. But it's the same dogs because I found pictures online, showed them, and that's the ones that Kimberly saw. So we're going to set up this camera tonight. We're going to fasten up the two ducks and one chicken we have left in a cage and leave it out here. Essentially kind of use them for bait, but they're going to be secure in a cage. And I'm going to have the real link camera set up on them, have the notification set up where it'll notify me if there's motion. And I'm going to get these dogs tonight if they come back. I'm tired of it. We've lost too many animals and we've got to get it taken care of so that we don't have to worry about future animals when we start replacing these. It's very expensive to buy these animals, to feed them and take care of them. And then we grow attached to them. And it's ridiculous that we have to suffer the costs and the losses because somebody didn't want to take care of their animals and were careless and reckless by dumping them off. So we're fixing to get things to get this camera set up. And while we do, we're going to tell you a little bit about our sponsor of today's video. 
RealLink is a leader in security camera technologies providing eco-friendly monitoring solutions for people of all walks of life. Whether you're looking for indoor solutions or outdoor solutions, they've got it all. They work with Wi-Fi or you can use a SIM card and use cell service if you're in an area that does not provide Wi-Fi where you can still monitor remotely and know what's going on at your property. The camera system they sent us to try it was the Argus PT Ultra. It came with two cameras, two solar panels, and a smart hub. The Smart Hub is really great because it offers a solution where all your data can be encrypted and stored in one place, which is located inside our home. Real Link's cameras provide crystal clear video. They offer accurate alerts where you can differentiate between people, animals, and vehicles. Two-way audio with a siren feature on it that you can set off an alarm or an alarm will set off whenever its motion is detected. Also has a spotlight that can activate. They're super easy to install and you have remote access to them at all times with your Real Link app. The Argus PT Ultra is a really great camera. It's got an eight megapixel lens and offers 4K video feed. One really great thing that we liked about it is we needed something where we could use it where there wasn't power because as y'all all know, we had a predator get in and wipe out all of our chickens and ducks. And we needed a solution that would help us do that. And with the real link, we've got the camera up on the chicken pen and if there's motion activated, it'll send an alert right to our phone so we can get out here and try to stop those predators. It's really great. One great thing that makes it super easy to install is each one of them will come with this little box inside the box and it's got a quick start guide that gives you all the directions you need to install it and tells all about it. Another thing, if you don't have the smart hub, the cameras have a spot where you can put an SD card right here on the camera for local storage so you'll always have that. For the solar panel, Three screws is all it takes to mount this. Screw the solar panel on, plug it in, you're good to go. The real link camera itself only takes two screws to mount it. So it's really great and super easy. We're fixing to show you what the app will do. Another great thing about real link is the app. You can access all of your cameras real easily. They'll pop up here. We've only got one activated right now. You can click on it and then you can see all the features that work with that camera. It initially goes into a live view. It's got a siren if you need to trigger an alarm. If you have an intruder or something, you can have it do that. It also has a spotlight, which if it's night, you can turn on the spotlight. In the daytime, we don't really need it. It's got where you can adjust the volume because it's got two-way audio. That's to take a picture of the screen, to record the screen. It even allows you to pan the camera. It's got controls for that. You can go side to side and also up and down. That way you can check out anything you might need to see. It's got a playback feature and also a talk button. If you use this for security purposes and somebody comes up, you can always push the talk button to talk back and forth with whoever's there. But lots of great features with the app. The Argus PT Ultra, a great addition to anybody's smart security needs. So be sure to check out the link we have in the description and upgrade your smart security system today. So these real link cameras are super easy to install. The ones we got use Wi-Fi and they've also got a solar panel to keep them charged. But it's just a couple of screws to mount the mount for the actual camera and then three screws to mount the mount for the solar panel. But we're fixing to get the bracket for this up first and then we will get the solar panel up. And we're just going to eyeball level because this sign, this is an old sign frame that I had. And we're just using it because we didn't have anything tall to put this out here and we were needing to get something done quick. So I'm just mounting it up what appears to be level there. Got the first screw in. It's good and secure now. The camera will mount to that. And then now we're going to get the solar panel mount put up. Just gonna get these in here loose first and then tighten it down so we can get it set up in the right spot. 
Okay, we've got our mounting brackets up, so now we've just got to place the camera, which it has a hole to tell you which way it needs to line up. And then it's just got an Allen screw on the top that you tighten down, and your camera's there. It's got an antenna that goes up, which our wi is on the other side, so it may not be the best place to do this, but it should pick up, so that's the main thing. And then we've just got to get the solar panel put on. Okay. And just spin this solar panel around. Now it's good and tight. It's got a little safety thing on the back to tighten to make sure it's good and tight. Then you can loosen this up to adjust it where your best sun will be. And we're just gonna face it mostly straight up and a little bit to the southeast because that's the way our sun is right now. Also, we fully charge these before we um, put them up. It recommended doing that so that you start with a full charge. And I'm just gonna let a little bit of this slack off. And then I'm gonna put this tie back around it so that we don't have a bunch of cord hanging. And it actually only takes a few hours of sunlight to recharge these. That's awesome. Then you just got to plug in the solar panel. Little green light came on on the back, so I assume that that's good. And we should be good to go now. It does have a little on and off switch on the back, which is currently turned off. So I'm going to... Reach back there and turn it on. Yep, I think that's on, as far as I can see. Now we just gotta get the app set up. Make sure you put all your seals in. Now we're gonna get the app set up, get this thing going. Then we're gonna grab a cage real quick to put the chicken and ducks in so that they're safe. And hopefully we can get rid of these predators because we have to do this before they start attacking our other animals. Okay. Fixing to get the ducks. As you can see, the camera lights up with motion. So hopefully if we put this over here close and the dogs start coming towards it, it'll kick on, notify us, and we can get out here and figure out what's trying to get our animals. Girls, I may need your help in a minute. I'll catch these and hand them out to you. You're gonna wanna catch her inside that house. Or why don't you go, one of y'all go up in here and catch those ducks. Okay, here, put, put the other one in here. We're just going to put them in here overnight. First thing in the morning, I'll let them out. Like I said, the dogs came back in daylight the second time, but the first time they did it, it was overnight, so... We're going to see if maybe they will, and this is so you're safe. if they come back, like I said, I just want it to be whenever I'm going to be home. And since I'm off right now, hopefully this thing will notify me and I can get out here before the dogs get the rest of them. But we're just going to leave them right here for tonight. They'll be fine. They've had water and feed all day, so they'll be fine overnight without it because they'd have been bedded down in the house and wouldn't have been eating anyhow or drinking. So we're going to leave them in there, like I said, just for overnight. And hopefully we can end this tear soon. And then I'm sure that there's an adjustment I can set on where that will pick up movement at. But yeah. I want to keep them inside the fence so that they are safer and it'll take the, the dogs a little more time to get in. And like I said, maybe we'll get them on camera and I can get them taken care of before they kill anything else. Yeah, when we chose the crate instead of a wire cage, just because there is less chance of something being able to get into it and get them since we have three survivors right now. Yeah. Yeah, so we're not gonna put anything else out here until we can figure out what's going on and take care of this issue. But it's dark, so we're gonna pick this back up tomorrow when it's daylight, let you know how it went and finish things off then. Okay, so it's the next day. We've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is the two ducks and the chicken are perfectly fine and healthy. We'll show you them in a minute. The bad news is 
the dogs didn't return when we were prepared for them so we still have to deal with that what we're going to continue to do is most likely whenever we're going to be away or at night we're going to fasten them up in this cage until we can get those dogs caught the fact that they've come back in the daylight and at night we don't really know when they'll show up so we've just got to be prepared for them at all times yep. it's been a really traumatic experience having to deal with this kind of loss but i'll show you the ones that are left like i said they've got they went over and got a drink whenever we let them out earlier but let's see if i can yeah, if you'll get them to walk out this way. well that's fine i can get it in there maybe Sorry, I'm using a tripod, so it makes it a little harder than a selfie stick. But, yep, there's the two ducks. Perfectly fine. Yep, see, they're up getting around. The the one looks like maybe she was injured a little bit, but she seems to be acting fine. She's still eating and drinking, so we're just going to monitor that and see how that goes. And then over here is Frances. Oh, wait, nope, she's out here. Don't stir up too much or she'll fly over the pen because she's still shook up from whenever they were after. The feathers that she's missing on her back are from molting and don't appear to be from the actual attack because she was molting before they actually got attacked. But she's, she's still shook up a little bit from that attack. So we're just trying to keep our distance till she calms down. She's pretty broody and so she likes to sit in the doghouse even if there's not eggs there. So, I think that might have been what actually saved her, though. But we're just going to let her calm down. Maybe eventually she will. With some time, hopefully she'll calm down. We'll probably add another chicken out here just so that she'll have a friend so she's not the only chicken with the ducks, and that might help, too. But we're not going to plan on restocking this or putting a whole lot of other stuff in here until we get this problem taken care of with these dogs. Like I said, I saw them down the road the other night, but there was nothing I could do about them at that time. But we are going to be on the constant watch for them so that we can try to keep this from happening again because it's been pretty bad. We had, I mean, a lot of these chickens out here weren't named and they were just, I mean, they were friendly and everything. But we did have some pretty good ones that we lost. We lost Toby the Duck, Charles the Duck, and Keenan, which was our little bantam. But, um,. And Rosie, which was a barred rock. She was, we lost her in the first round. But it's been pretty bad. If y'all can remember, we raised Toby. He was the first duck we'd ever hatched out of this second round of our own eggs. And so he lived in the house for a while. It was Abby's little baby. If we can find some old footage, we'll try to put that in here so that y'all can see that. And we'll kind of do a tribute to Toby. Not that he was any different than the others because we miss them all. But we, he was really special because he was the first own duck egg that we'd hatched ourselves and so we actually have some footage of him like I said we kept him in the house for a few weeks until he got big enough to have some friends and go outside but and here is Toby hey buddy yep he is very very friendly he is so sweet yeah y'all if y'all remember Whenever he was in our house, just going all around. So like I said, that's, it's good news that we didn't lose anything else. Terrible news that we still are having to deal with this predator. But we're going to stay after it, stay vigilant about it. And we're going to end up finding these and getting them taken care of. And I'm going to do my best to track down the person who dropped them off. Because they need to be dealt with too. Because it's ridiculous that they were so selfish and careless that they did this and made it where these dogs terrorized other people because my guess is the reason they dumped them is probably because they might have terrorized their animals or something they just wanted to get rid of them for that reason but we're gonna go ahead and cut it short here because francis is kind of frantic and she just keeps clucking i don't know how loud this is gonna be or how well you're gonna be able to hear Okay, so it's been a couple of days. We didn't want to close out the video right away because we thought that the dogs might come back and we could catch some footage on the new Real Link camera of them trying to get into the pen. And plus, we could show you how the notifications work so that we could come out here and catch them and take care of the issue. They've not been back. Our two ducks and Francis are doing great. We're super thankful for that. We were a little concerned about it because we thought if they didn't come back when we were ready for them, that they might show up when we weren't ready for them. But Kimberly was talking to one of our neighbors and they actually said that the dogs got after somebody's cows and that farmer actually took care of the issue. Um, we think that they only got one of them as far as we know, which was the ringleader. But as long as they took care of that one, I don't think the other one's going to come around because the one that they 
described is the one that Kimberly actually saw in the pen. We don't know if the other one will try to come back without its friend, but for now, we think we have the problem taken care of. We're super thrilled about that. We're super thankful for Real Link for supplying these cameras so that we now have some security monitoring over our pins. We've got one more to install that we'll probably put over the goat pin, but we've got to get something set up for that. That being said, like I said, we're super thankful to Real Link and be sure to go down and check out the link in the description and order yours today because they're super great cameras. We appreciate you watching. We'll catch you next time on Grounds Family Farm. Bye.